Hello, it's Amanda Walker here from handmadebyamanda.com Just doing another quick Christmas project here on Facebook Live Just waiting for my iPad to catch up So that I can see any comments Ah, there we go. Okay, so just wanted a quick project to show um, to show you today. I've got um, some of the Snowman Season designer series paper. So from the, the Let It Snow suite here on pages eighteen and nineteen of the catalog. I just wanted to show you how to do a quick little um, gift box. So, um, using a scoreboard, now if I can get this into the frame, you can see here I've got a piece of real red cardstock and it's 8 inches by 8 inches and I'm going to score this on all four sides at 2 inches. Now this is not my design of box. This has been around the internet chaps for quite a while. Um, it's one that I turn to most Christmases for some quick um, gifts. So I've scored that all around and I've also got a piece of the designer series paper. This is six inches by six inches and I'm going to score that. If I just take a small scrap of cardstock here on my scoreboard and I butt that up, just gives a tiny little buffer, makes the lid fit better. So I'm going to score this one at one inch on all four sides. I can just get that. Get in there. It's always the way, isn't it? When you're trying to do something quick, something slows you down. I just really like how the width of the card, of that strip of cardstock just gives a very small buffer for the scoreboard for the lid to fit your box better. So then we can just fold and burnish on all your score lines. For the lid and the base. Then when you cut out the boxes I cut straight up the side of the rectangle to the score line and then I always wedge out the square on both sides. Now when I do a square box, I always do cut one and then rotate. It just spreads the, um, the support that the tabs give around on all four sides of the box. If I do a rectangle, I, I, if the box base is rectangle, I do do that differently. So just up. And it really doesn't matter if it, you do large um, wedges or small wedges because you really don't see them anyway. And I'm going to do the same thing for the lid. So you just go up the side of the rectangle and wedge out the square. All th fingers, all thumbs. And 
and I'm concentrating because I'm not talking. Do you get like that too when you're crafting? Okay. So now I'm just going to take some tear and tape. I usually like to use tear and tape when I'm doing boxes because it's a very strong hold. You can also use Tombow. I'm going to line that here along the score line. I'm not sure if you can see right here up as close to the score line as you can get without going over because we don't want the tape sticking out. If you're watching me live, say hi. Let me know you're here. So I'm not talking to myself. That's the weirdest part I think I'm finding with lives. Just sitting here talking to myself. It's a good thing none of my family are home today. They'd all think I was pretty weird. So just getting tape on all the little tabs. Okay. It was like to burnish my tape, it just makes it easier to get the backing off. And then because I have big nails, just use a picker to take all my tape off. And then just use line the side up and press the tape in to make a cute little Christmas gift box. Like so. And take the tape off here if you're watching me live say hi and same process you're just lining that up with the straight corner I don't think I can see comments. To make a lid, and that fits just nicely on the base. And because we use that shim, the lid goes on quite easily. Sometimes it may get caught on your little tabs, and you've got a really cute little Christmas box. So to decorate, I've got a piece of Whisper White, and I've just cut that out with the stitched rectangle framelits and I've used this one here and I've done that already because my big shots on the opposite side of the room um, I have some shaded spruce ink and I'm going to stamp with this one the North Pole delivery from the perfectly plaid Excellent. And I'm actually going to. No. So we'll sit that there. 
was going to um, stamp the to and from here from the itty bitty Christmas. I was going to use this one here on the back, but I'm actually not going to make this into a tag. So I've changed my mind. Now, last week I was talking about the snowman season, but I thought this week I'd show you how I do this um, to punch out the snowman. So I take, I've made a template, so I've just taken a scrap of cardstock and punched it out. So I just line up the stamps inside my template. And sort of pick it up and they'll nestle down into the holes and then you can just take one large block and you can pick them all up at once if I take some memento black I oh, don't you hate that It's okay, it will punch out. There we go. So I need to colour him in. So I've got some of my blends. I've got shaded spruce. So if I colour just his leaves, the holly leaves, in the dark and the light. Just use some cherry cobbler for the berries. I've got. We don't actually have um, the Coastal Gabbana in a blend, but this is Pool Party, um, so the dark one is very similar to Coastal Gabbana. Just to give you stripe some detail, some basic black, and I always just use the dark on this side of his hat and spread it out to about halfway. And then you go in with the light and blend the colour out to the rest of his hat. This gives some. And of course he needs a orange carrot nose. And then we can take the snowman builder punch. And we can line that up nicely. Excellent. Now I might also just grab paper and that's just using a starburst punch so I'll put that there. If I grab some glue dots put a glue dot on his hat Combo to uh, arms are so small. Does anybody else have trouble with these little arms? Just put some um, just some minis because I've used up all my larges and I haven't got a new packet out. I 
not sure what's wrong with that one. That's a quick way to get the backings off if you've got a piercing tool. little bit of glue on the back here let's see some red rhinestones you gotta give him some red buttons Why not? There we go, and we can put that, if that stays on, it's because it's on the glimmer paper, it's really difficult sometimes. And I can just put some glue. And stick that onto the front uh, top of your box. So there we go. Just a quick and easy. Now, if boxes like this is something that you think you'd like to do for Christmas, some really quick and easy Christmas gifts, I'll put this as a PDF on my blog. Um, just gives you the measurements. It's a gift box with Liz, uh, a lid. So for the base, I used a piece of paper that was 8 inches by 8 inches. I have also done one that is 20 by 20 centimetres because there is a slight difference. This one here is a 20 by 20 and as you can see, there is a very small difference in the sizing. Um, and the lid I started with a piece that was 6 inches by 6 inches, that's this one. Um, 15 centimetres by 15 centimetres is what I've done for this one. Score the base at two inches on all four sides which is a five centimeter mark you can score the lid at one inch on all four sides which is a two and a half centimeter mark now you can do this format with other sizes now I have in the past made all of these sizes using inch measurements but I have given some approximations for centimeters but I do not know if you cut using centimeters whether that is true to size I have got one here that I was fiddling with but the lid is just a little bit you can see there is a bit of a gap so somewhere in my measurements for making this box um, it's a little bit wrong so I'll have to readjust the measurements and put um, do a new base and a new lid so you can do that with the Christmas time is here this is some old designer series paper that I was working with. I have also done it with the Christmas is Gleaming set. So I'll be filling these with lots of nice goodies for Christmas. And see you soon. Bye.